Okay, so this is the makeup video in case you were absent from class when we did the pH indicator uh, activity. So I have my lab handout, and over here I have on the left I have sodium hydroxide and NaOH, and I want you to know that sodium hydroxide is considered a base on the pH scale. And over here on the right, hydrochloric acid, HCl, and like the name implies, hydrochloric acid is an acid. Now, I'm not trying to figure out, the purpose of today is to not learn. I'm not trying to figure out, is sodium hydroxide an acid or a base? I already know it's a base. I'm not trying to figure out, is sodium, uh, excuse me, is hydrochloric acid, is it an acid or a base? I already know it's an acid. It's got the word acid in the title. Instead, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be testing six different indicators, as you can see on my page here. So the first indicator I'm going to test is a chemical by the name of phenol red. Now, phenol red will indicate if something is an acid or a base. And so it does this by turning colors. Let me add a drop of phenol red into cavity number one, the little indentation labeled number one. So here we have one drop. Okay. And then I may also add phenol red into cavity number two. One drop is all I need. Okay, and you can see that there is a red drop, phenol red, in each of them. Now, I'm going to take my hydrochloric acid. I'm going to take my hydrochloric acid, hydrochloric acid solution. I'm going to add one drop into cavity number one, and I'm going to see if there's a color change. Notice how it went from like an, a reddish color to almost like an orangish color. There's a color change there. That should indicate something for me. Next, I'm going to take my container of sodium hydroxide, which is a base, and I'm going to add a drop of it in the cavity number two. Notice how it too, also if I swirl it up a little bit, so it's gone from like that red to almost like a magenta color. So notice how there's a color change in not just cavity one, but also cavity two. So if I'm if I'm doing the makeup activity right now, I'm going to look at my handout and I'm going to fill in the observation that I just saw. Okay, so on my handout, I'm now looking at the indicator by the name of phenolphthalein. And this is phenolphthalein. You can see from the container that it's, it's colorless. It's a clear liquid. So I'm going to add a drop of phenolphthalein to cavity number three. And there we go. And now I'm going to add a drop of phenolphthalein to cavity number four. Okay, it may not look like there's anything in there, but there is. Again, um, it is clear and, and, and colorless. Now, I'm going to take my hydrochloric acid, and I'm going to add a drop of hydrochloric acid into cavity number three, where there's a drop of phenolphthalein. Notice how the color did not change. It's still clear. So now I'm going to take my my base, sodium hydroxide, and I'm going to add a drop into cavity number four. And instantly you can see that there is a color change, almost a, a bright pinkish magenta color. So that's an observation. Now that, now that I'm done with that part, I can go to my lab handout and I can fill in my table on the back and I can record that observation. Okay, so now I'm at the part of my handout that uses bromothymol blue. So like the name implies, bromothymol blue kind of has a naturally blue color to it. And I'm going to put a drop of bromothymol blue in cavity number five and cavity number six. So here we go. Cavity number five has a drop of bromothymol blue. Cavity number six has a drop of bromothymol blue. 
And now, like we've done with the previous indicators, I'm going to now first take uh, my, my hydrochloric acid. So this is my known acid. When I add a drop of known acid into cavity number five, I'm looking to see if there's a color change. You can see it went from blue to yellow instantly. Okay, well now here's my known base. Sodium hydroxide is my base. Let me add a drop of sodium hydroxide to cavity number six. Nothing happened. It's still blue. So when I go to my table here, I can now fill in my observations. Again, bromothymol blue in the presence of an acid turned yellow. Bromothymol blue in the presence of a base stayed, uh, stayed blue. Okay, so now I'm at the part of my handout that talks about red litmus paper. And here's a container with some red litmus paper. You've probably used red litmus paper in middle school. I'm just going to use my forceps here to pick up a piece. And it says to place the red litmus paper into cavity number seven. And also to get another piece of red litmus paper and place this into cavity number eight. Okay. Now, like I've done the past couple uh, indicators, I'm going to start with my acid. I'm going to start with my known acid, hydrochloric acid. And when I add a drop of acid to the red litmus paper, let's see if there's a color change. Notice how it's still that pink color. Okay, so let me go to the base now. Sodium hydroxide is my known base and I'm going to go ahead and add a drop to cavity number eight. And you can see there's a color change. So in a acid, the red litmus paper stayed red. In a base, the red litmus paper turned blue. So on my handout, I can now fill in my data table I can go ahead and fill in my data table with that observation. Okay, I'm at the fifth indicator now. Blue litmus paper, the fifth indicator on your handout. And I'm going to get a piece of blue litmus paper with my tweezers or my forceps, and I'm going to put a piece into cavity number nine. And I'm going to get another piece with my forceps, and I'm going to put another piece into cavity number 10. And like I've been doing, I'm going to start with my, my known acid. I'm going to take my hydrochloric acid, and I'm going to add a drop to cavity number 9 that has the blue litmus paper, and you can see an instant color change. The blue litmus paper went from a blue, a blue color to that pink color. Now, here's my sodium hydroxide, my known base. I'm going to add a drop of the base into cavity number 10 that has the blue litmus paper as well. And there we go. No color change. It's just wet. So notice how in a, in a known acid, the blue litmus paper turned colors. In a known base, the blue litmus paper stayed the same. So on my handout, I can go ahead and record that observation in my data table. Okay, so here is the final indicator on my handout. This is universal litmus paper. And I'll explain the color chart in a moment, but I'm going to start kind of how I've been doing the other ones. I'm going to take a, a piece of the universal litmus paper, and I'm going to place it into cavity number 11. And I'm going to take another piece of universal litmus paper with my forceps here, and I'm going to place it into cavity number 12. Okay, so let's start with my known acid. Here is hydrochloric acid. It's what we've been using this whole time. It's an acid, and I'm going to add a drop to cavity number 11. And you can see an 
instant color change. Now, I'm going to take my sodium hydroxide, which is my known base, and I'm going to add a drop to cavity number 12. And you can see instant color change. Well, now here's where this color chart is helpful. If I use my forceps and I pick up the one from cavity 11, which has been placed into the acid, and I kind of compare on my color chart. Now, I know it's an acid, so I know it's going to have a pH less than uh, 7. And uh, it's probably somewhere in this range, probably like maybe a 1 or so, a pH of maybe 1 on, on, the, on the scale here. So there you have, you can see not only can universal litmus paper tell me if something is an acid or a base, but I can also get the exact pH of the chemical I'm using. So let me go ahead and put that back. Now, here's the, the one that was dipped in sodium hydroxide. And I know it's a, I know it's a base, sodium hydroxide, so I kind of just read along, and it looks like it's in the 12 to 13 range on the pH scale. And so you can see the advantage of universal pH paper. Not only does it test if something is an acid or a base, but it also can give you the exact pH of the solution as well. So based on these observations, I can now go ahead and fill in the last column, or excuse me, the last row of my lab handout.